There you go, guys. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me, see me. It's a little dark and dreary outside, so the lighting's not so good, but we're gonna make do. Um, before we start, I, I said this a little last minute, but get a pot of water on um, high heat to boil, okay? Uh, we're gonna need to just blanch our broccoli a little bit before we put it in a quiche, just so we ensure that it's really tender. We have people tuning in. I just want to make sure I don't want yep, to start. Yep, people are jumping in now. Okay, yay. All right, we'll wait another second. But again, get your oven preheated to 375 degrees. Um, get your pot of water. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> pot of water on uh, the stove and on high heat so we can get that boiling as fast as we can. And I salted the water a bit too, um, just like you would pasta water because we want our broccoli to be nice and flavorful. And then we're going to get moving on our crust because we also need to get the crust, once we um, put it together, we're gonna put it in the freezer for a couple minutes while we're making the filling so that it'll be a little bit easier uh, to mold and such. All right, are you ready? Let's do this, happy Sunday everybody. Um, so we're making broccoli and cheese quiche, but what's great about this recipe is you can kind of switch it up with whatever you've got, uh, especially the, during these times, so you may only have frozen vegetables, um, I saw someone had cauliflower, spinach is great, peppers, mushrooms. You can do whatever cheese, veggies you want, um, even fresh herbs as well, and it'll be absolutely delicious. I'm gonna teach you a couple techniques right now. So we're gonna make a homemade crust, um, and there are a couple things that you have to remember when making the, the homemade crust, and part of that is that your butter is super cold. So actually, mine's still in the fridge. I'm gonna grab it in just a second, um, but let's measure out the dry ingredients. So first we need one and a half cups of flour. Just to kind of be a little healthier, I'm doing a blend of regular all-purpose flour and whole wheat flour. So I'm gonna do a cup of all-purpose. So when we are measuring out dry ingredients, guys, just fill up your cup, and then you're just gonna level it off with a knife like that. All right, and that's a perfect cup measurement. Baking is a science, guys. This is exact. We want to be as exact as we can to ensure you get the same results as I will. Oh, we're doing whole wheat. Okay, so that's all purpose. And now I have whole wheat flour. My pot of water is boiling so nicely over here. So we're going to start that broccoli shortly. Ooh. All right. You can even use your finger if you'd like, but just make sure it's nice and level. And so that was a half a cup of whole wheat flour. So you can use all-purpose. You can use gluten-free all-purpose flour. I know someone had a blend of flours. You can do gluten-free all-purpose mixed with a little almond meal if you'd like. Um, and so we have one and a half cups of our flour. We're gonna need a nice amount of salt. So a half a teaspoon of salt. And during this live, guys, ask me questions. You can ask me anything at all, and I'm happy to help. Um, especially baking questions because you guys know I'm a professional baker and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. So this is a half a teaspoon of salt and if I'm going too fast just tell me pump the brakes. I need a second Danielle. I will slow down. I'm doing this for you guys. We're in this together. Nobody left behind. So half a teaspoon of salt and now we're going to grab our butter in just a second but I'm gonna first beat one egg. Okay so just get a small bowl on the side. One egg like so. And we're going to add to this some water. This is very important when you're making any type of pie crust. You want that water that you're incorporating to be ice cold and the butter, which is why mine's still in the fridge, to be ice cold. What happens when the butter, I'll show you how we're going to incorporate it, when the butter is really, really cold, what happens is little we're going to just incorporate it so that there's little little pea-sized pieces of butter still within the dough when it goes in the oven then the butter is going to kind of slowly melt within the dough and create little air pockets and create that flaky wonderful texture and so cold butter is key and cold water to ensure that the butter stays nice and cold in our dough so we just need two and a half tablespoons of that ice water. I don't have an ice maker, so I'm very lucky I had a bag of ice in my freezer. This is New York City life, guys. We don't even have ice makers. So two and a half tablespoons. All right, like so. 
Now we're just going to beat that together. Careful we don't lose it. <laughs> that should be enough. And set that aside for just a second. And now um, our broccoli water is boiling. If yours is not boiling, just let me know. I'll give you guys another minute. I'm just going to take my lid off and I'm going to grab my butter. So just stand by one second. All right, guys, so I have here two sticks of butter. We're going to be using 10 tablespoons. There's eight tablespoons in one stick, so we just need two extra tablespoons. So just take your knife. This is what you need, all right? 10 tablespoons. I'm going to set my rolling pin aside for a moment, wherever I can find room. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to cut up our butter in smaller pieces. So I'm going to take my cutting board over here so you guys can see. You know what guys, let's take a minute, let's get our broccoli starting to cook because this will take about two or three minutes. So I have my broccoli here. We're going to use only about two cups. Um, does anybody need another minute for your water? Just let me know. Just as long as it's simmering, it doesn't have to be a rolling boil. We just want to get it kind of blanched a bit. So put your broccoli in the water. And we're gonna let it cook maybe two, three minutes. And then we'll put it back in the same bowl. It's super simple, we're just gonna keep it easy. All right, so I'm just gonna take my little, this is called a spider. You have one of these tools. Toss the broccoli in that hot water and let that sit a moment. Okay, I'll give you guys a second to regroup. And we're going back to our butter. So unwrap your butter. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut vertically down your stick of butter just once, flip it over, cut again. So we're just quartering the stick first. And then we're gonna cut smaller pieces like this. See that? Take out my last two tablespoons. Any questions yet, guys? Everybody feeling good? Feeling a little stir crazy? <laughs> I know it's kind of tough, you know, especially when the days aren't so nice like today. It just, ugh, you feel so lethargic and just you really need that vitamin D to get you through, right? But we're in it together. Hopefully we'll get out of it soon, but stay healthy, stay inside. I want to shout out all the medical professionals out there. We're so grateful for all that you do. Thank you so, so much. All right, guys, so we are, our butter now is in our flour and salt mixture. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pastry cutter. Some of you might be saying, Danielle, I don't have a pastry cutter. Put this in a food processor. That would be the next best thing. Or you can use your hands to just kind of mix, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, mix the butter into the flour. The bad thing about using your hands is the heat of your hands will adjust the temperature of the butter a little bit so it may make your crust a little less flaky but sometimes it's all we've got is our hands and I always say your hands are sometimes your best tool so use them you've got them. so take your pastry cutter if you have I'm going to show you how to do that first and you're gonna just go downwards and you're just gonna press that butter into the flour mixture okay you're just gonna keep doing that push 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 okay and then every so often take your finger and just push that butter outside the little wires here because because we just want all of that butter into that flour the best we can so keep going now if you're using your hands I'll show you how to do that you're just gonna take your hands and you're just going to push and kind of squeeze the butter moving it around into the flour and kind of getting it incorporated in there. Just kind of squeezing it, squeezing it, squeezing it, squeezing it. <laughs> All right, and if you're using a food processor, I'm gonna need a paper towel. If you're using a food processor, just pulse it enough that in the end, there are little pea-sized pieces of butter left. Then you're good to go, okay? So let's, I'm gonna keep going with my pastry cutter. 
if you guys can let me know what method you're using, just comment below. I'd really like to hear which method you, you're doing. Because I know not everybody has a pastry cutter. You guys know I, <laughs> I make scones for a living, so this baby is my best friend. I use this every single day. <laughs> Let's check on our broccoli. Our broccoli is really bright green. This is also why I like to blanch it first. It just retains that beautiful bright green color. And again, it's jump starting the cooking process so we don't have hard, hard, crunchy pieces of broccoli in our quiche. We have a couple of people using the food processor. Food processor, are great. It's a really easy method. Quite frankly, I'm not using one either because I don't have a big one that's, that's good for this. I only have a small mini chopper, so. This is better for me, and I'm pretty used to this method, so I'm pretty quick at it. All right, we're almost there. I'm gonna show you what the texture should look like. Again, just scrape down your pastry cutter every so often. All righty, beautiful. So, now what happens is the flour is nice and malleable already. You can kind of, if you take your fingers and you squeeze it in your hand, it forms almost a little dough already. So that means the flour is nicely incorporated. Look at that. There are little pea-sized pieces of flour throughout. See that? This size butter, that is absolutely perfect. So now we're ready for our egg and cold water. So what we're gonna do here, and look closely, Create a little well. And now if you used your food processor, dump the flour mixture into another bowl. Let's do this by hand together. Everybody ready? So make a little well. So a little kind of hole in the center. Pour that egg and water mixture right in the center, like so. And now you're just gonna mix. And you're gonna kind of fold in from the sides and stir, 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 stir. And you'll start to see it moisten even more, of course, and kind of come together into bigger pieces of dough. Doesn't that look good? Okay, when you're at this stage where there's not too much dry flour on the bottom of the bowl, I'm joking. Um, you can take your hands, and again, this is where you want less is more. So you want to try to handle the dough as little as possible. So we're just going to take it and just as quickly as we can and gently as we can gather it into one mass so we can roll it out. Okay. Look at that. So now we have a beautiful dough. Look how nice that is, guys. Everybody doing okay? And I think our broccoli is just about done. Okay, so that's our dough. Now we need some parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper, wax paper is great too. Plastic wrap you can use also. It's a little, I don't know, for plastic wrap is probably my worst enemy in the kitchen. I always have trouble managing it. It's always wrapped all around me, ripped. It, I get it, the roll screwed up. So. Parchment paper is my best friend. So what I do is I put one piece of parchment paper down. I'm gonna take a little extra flour. Put just a little bit of flour down. Put my ball of dough down and just press it down with my hand a little bit. Just to flatten it, just to start the rolling process. Make it easier. And now flour it again. Like so. And now we're gonna roll. But before we roll, let's take our broccoli out. It's looking done. See that? It's nice and bright green. It's starting to appear a bit softer. Let me take one out and test it. I'm gonna take a knife. Yeah, it's definitely a lot softer. So that means we are good to go. Try to drain it the best we can and just stick it in a separate bowl. Everybody all right out there? <laughs> How many people do we have cooking? We've got 10 right now. Okay. I can't believe it's Sunday again, guys. I feel like the weeks fly. I don't know about you. I thought I would be 
going crazy because the weeks are going slow, but it's not. The weeks are going so fast for me. Okay, so set that broccoli aside. And we are ready to roll. Okay, so I have my rolling pin here. Highly recommend this one. It's from William Sonoma. It's got a nice heavy duty marble middle piece, which just makes rolling so much easier. So we're gonna start in the middle and we're gonna push outwards away from us. Okay, and then push towards us using a little bit of our body weight. And you wanna to try to make as much of a circle as you can. What's great about quiche is you don't have to make the crust perfect. It's okay if it's a little rustic looking. This is not gonna be like, you know, it's not like it's the top of an apple pie. It's going underneath. So it really doesn't have to be perfect. So do not fret. Mine doesn't look perfect either. And quite frankly, my apartment's very hot. So it's not the best for dough and things get soft very quickly. So you gotta just work as quickly as possible. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll it out until it's about, I would say this is about an eighth of an inch thick. So you want it thin, but not so thin that it's gonna burn in the oven. But this looks good. How you can also test out that you have enough, it, it rolled out enough, is take your pie pan. So this uh, is, I believe, nine inches. Let me see if I can see it. I think it's nine inches. Anyway, so we're going to just measure. So I have a little bit, about an inch around, um, that's an inch bigger than my pie pan, so that's perfect. You can use a metal one. I like to use this Pyrex one because I can see at the bottom, so I can make sure that the, the crust is really nice and brown and cooked at the bottom and not uh, too doughy and raw. So that's why I'm using that one. So now we're gonna put it in the pan and then we're gonna stick it in the freezer while we prep the filling so that it's nice and cold. Because again, that butter will re-solidify a little bit and, and just give us that nice flaky crust when it bakes. So this is why parchment paper is a beautiful thing. We're going to gently put our pie pan on top. We're gonna, I have my hand underneath the paper, like so, and now I'm gonna flip. And the parchment paper will release very easily and just gently pull away, like so. If we get a little hole, we can mend it, that's okay. And now we're going to gently, again, gentle is key, just kind of make sure that the crust is flush to the corner. We want as much room for our filling as possible. So make sure it's flush to the corner. And then if you have any holes, like see I have a hole here, just kind of squeeze it and patch it with your fingers. This again, does not have to be perfect. We're going very rustic. I love rustic guys. I think rustic just makes you Think of your, your grandma, your family recipes. Just, you know, it doesn't have to be all about the crazy presentation with the gel and the foam and the this and the that, all this molecular gastronomy. I think this nostalgic kind of cooking like this is what really makes, it sparks something in you, right? It makes you think about some, some good memories from your childhood, perhaps. And so I like things nice and rustic. So a little bit of extras on the edge. So I'm gonna just trim a little bit. I do want some extra because I'm gonna kind of pinch the edge and make it look pretty. So let's just cut some of this extra. And if you have enough extra where you can make something else, maybe you can make baby quiches in a, pine, in a, a muffin tin. That'll be really, really cute and easy. So see, there's just some extra dough. You can also use some of that extra dough to patch up any holes if you have any holes in the center. You wanna make sure you don't have any holes on the bottom or else um, that filling will kind of burn. Okay, so let's pinch the edge. We're gonna do very simple crimping, it's called. So we're just gonna tuck that rough part under a little bit. So just kind of make it less rough. So just take that edge and just tuck it under. Are you guys doing okay? <laughs> I wish I could hear you guys. Okay, that should be good enough. Now we're gonna start to crimp. This is how I like to crimp. So all you have to do is, it's hard to explain, but we're gonna take our thumb and we're gonna push with our thumb and kind of pull with our pointer finger, like that. See that? 
And if some spaces are a little bit non-existent like there, again, don't worry about it. This is a rustic dish. I'm not serving anybody, but my husband and I. You could also freeze this crust as is, wrap it in some plastic wrap and put it in the freezer and you can make a quiche another time. See that guys? So again, it's just push with your thumb and pull down a little bit with your pointer finger. Everybody's look decent. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, just decent. Okay, look at that, beautiful. Now I'm gonna put this in the freezer, if you have room, I actually don't even know if I have room, at least in the fridge, to get cold while we make the filling. So let's run and do that really quick, so stand by. really tight in there but I got it in okay so I have that extra dough if you need to save it on the side to patch up some holes again later on if that happens no problem I'm just setting it aside but we can even make some mini quiches if we have too much filling sometimes that happens your pie pan might be a little smaller than mine you can save it and bake it in something else even bake them on their own the filling to make like a frittata without crust okay so now we're gonna make our filling are you excited I have a separate tray um, over here <laughs> so that I have room for you guys. All right. Let's make our filling. I'm going to wipe my hands off. Everybody following? We're good. Okay, so this is very easy. All we need to start are some eggs. I'm going to crack five eggs into a bowl. Anybody have any questions while we're cracking our eggs? Happy to answer any questions. We're in this together. If you need me to slow down, by all means, I will slow down. But I'm sure you guys are hungry. This is a great brunch dish. And again, change it up. I love to make mushroom and goat cheese um, with caramelized onions. You can put whatever fillings you like. Okay, so five eggs in a bowl. Next hour milk or cream so i'm doing i had in my fridge low fat milk and heavy cream combined it's basically half and half so ideally i like to use half and half in this or whole milk something with a little bit of fat content that way you get a nice creamy texture but if all you've got is two percent milk it'll do it might be a little less creamy but ideally half and half or something that's a little bit creamier so i have here um this is three quarters of a cup Got a question. Yeah. Are the eggs cold or room temperature? So um, ideally when I make something like this, I like to bring them to room temperature. It doesn't matter though. It's gonna be fine either way. It's not so temperamental with this recipe, but I like to do room temperature because I find that um, things bake more evenly. So it'll be, but again, it doesn't really matter. So now take a whisk, whisk that three quarters of a cup of milk or cream or half and half, whatever you got, and the five eggs. And you wanna make sure it's really incorporated. You don't want any of, see like how some of that thick white, egg white membrane is still separate. You wanna make sure everything's really incorporated. Okay, and now we're going to add some salt. We definitely need some seasoning in here. I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, and then nutmeg. So if you made the cream spinach with me the other day, we put a pinch of nutmeg in that sauce. And I like to put nutmeg in this too because I think things with like a creamy rich texture, just this little pinch of warmth just really, really makes for such a great flavor, honestly. And a little goes a long way. So just a tiny, tiny pinch. Just a dash, okay? That's all you need. Just a dash, a little goes a very long way. And now we're gonna put some pepper, about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'm doing freshly ground, so it's maybe a little bit more robust. So maybe I'll, I'll do a little bit less. But again, it's up to you if you love pepper. 
definitely put a, a good amount. And you can also here, sometimes I do this, I put um, hot sauce. You can put a couple dashes of just regular like Frank's hot sauce. And that makes for a really beautiful flavor too. And not too much spice either. The acidity kind of just adds a lot of flavor. So if you want to do that too, you can add that. Okay, so that's that. Now the cheese. So I'm doing a blend. Traditionally, a lot of people just do broccoli and cheddar quiche, which is awesome. But I have in my cabinet something that I'm obsessed with, and it's Borsan cheese. So this is like a, almost like a whipped, really creamy cream cheese. And this one is shallot and chives. So it has shallots and chives and different herbs and spices. And it's so flavorful and so rich and creamy that I know it's going to give me such a, a, a wonderful, rich quiche filling. So I'm going to do some of that. So I have here, um, we're doing... I'm sorry, a cup, yeah, a cup of cheese. So I'm doing three quarters of a cup of cheddar and then about a quarter cup of the Borsan. I'm super excited about the Borsan. And I'm just, since my, this is very soft, I'm just gonna kind of crumble it. Might have to use my fingers a bit and just sort of crumble it. And it'll incorporate probably into the batter just a little more and we'll be good to go. Yeah, that's good. Wipe your hands off if you're doing soft cheese like that. Even like a chive cream cheese, honestly, would be pretty nice if you put like a tablespoon or two in your batter. That'd be really good. So now just kind of mix it together. I'm gonna take my whisk out at this point and I'm going to use um, just like a rubber spatula. Another thing you can do, and actually I'm gonna do this because I have some herbs I need to use before they go bad. I have fresh dill. If you have parsley, dill, a little fresh thyme, a little fresh rosemary, great to put a little fresh herb in here too. It gives it a little nice pop of green color, but also a beautiful fresh flavor. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of dill. So if you have anything like this, now's the time. If you have dried dill, go ahead. Dried dill is actually one of my I, it's a dried spice that I actually like and I think is more comparable to the fresh. It's, it's pretty good. So I'm going to use about a tablespoon or so of fresh dill. And now we're going to do our broccoli. So we need uh, two cups-ish of broccoli. We're going to use, I'm kind of going to eyeball it in a second. I'll let you guys know. Um, it depends. So, but I think around a cup and a half to two cups. So I have my broccoli here. Let's put it on our board and just be careful. It's probably a little warm and just break it up a little more. It's pretty soft now, so you don't need to break it up too much. Just make sure it's not too watery. If it's really not drained enough, drain it a little more, put it on paper towels because if it's super watery, you're filling might get watery. So you don't want that. So this is about, let's measure it. Yeah, I think we'll probably do two cups. So this is about a cup. So put that in your filling. And make sure also the broccoli is not piping, piping hot because it will cook your filling prematurely. So really rough chop. Don't go crazy. Put it in a cup. So two cups. That's great. Two cups was perfect. Wipe my hands. Any questions so far? Doing all right? <laughs> Hello out there. I feel like in Titanic. I'm like, anybody out there? <laughs> and now mix this together just I'm using a rubber spatula fold that all together it already looks so good creamy rich delicious and then I'm gonna grab my crust from the freezer it's as simple as that we will not be able to hang out for <laughs> the whole time while it bakes because this will probably bake for 30 to 35 minutes you want to make sure that the crust is nice and brown and you want to make sure that the filling is set creamy still but set and not like raw eggs you cut it and it just swims out you want to make sure it's solidified so let's grab our crust so stand by your oven's on 375 guys i grabbed my crust it's actually very cold that few minutes was perfect it really really Resolidify that butter and hopefully we'll get a beautiful flaky flaky crust i'm excited i'm hungry so take your filling dump that right in and what's nice about this recipe too is because we um 
we actually made our crust pretty thin in that pan, we don't have to par bake the crust. Everything will cook at the same amount of time. And another word of wisdom is if you notice that the crust becomes too dark on the edges before the center is cooked fully, just take some tin foil and cover the edges so that you protect the edges and that'll help a lot, okay? So just get that filling in there. Just make sure everything's distributed nicely. That looks so good. I have another couple pieces of broccoli floating around, so I'm just gonna <laughs> sprinkle that in like so. I'm gonna put a little bit more black pepper just over the top. This is totally optional and we are ready to bake. So 375 degree, degrees, 30, 35 minutes. Check on it though after 25, just to gauge, see how the crust is doing. If it's too dark, again, cover it. And then after 35 minutes or so, you should be done. Then set it on the counter, let it set. Maybe just let it cool for like 15 minutes or so, just so it's warm, but it's not piping hot and it'll be the perfect texture. It'll really start to kind of set even better and you'll be able to enjoy for brunch, dinner, breakfast. That's what I love about quiche too. It's an anytime kind of meal too. And it's super easy and we made the crust homemade. You don't need to go to the store and buy the crust. This was a pretty easy thing, you could admit, right? So thank you so much for joining me. Please, please take pictures, take videos, tag me in your stories and your posts because I love to see your final products. It just makes my whole life. I love it so much and I love to see that it came out great and you guys have been making all the rest of recipes perfectly they're so beautiful so thank you so much for following again my name is danielle sepsi from gotroomformore.com be sure to follow tag share everything and i will post this video also on youtube so you guys can cook along with me anytime at your convenience and uh enjoy happy sunday stay safe and healthy guys make sure you